Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. On the agenda tonight we have Hank Marvin and he's going to be playing the classic Apache and this is from the year 2000. So let's get Hank up on screen and see how he gets on. I'm just going to jump in here just to say what Hank's doing. He does a lot of alternate picking and you can see with his right hand, Hank never lets go of that whammy bar. That is where he's getting his expression. That's where he's getting his vibrato from. A lot of players just use the left hand to get that vibrato, whereas Hank was one of those guys that totally had his own sound and he always went to that whammy bar and always gave it that same Hank Marvin vibrato and it's like playing vibrato on the fret in terms of you can give it your own personality by just editing that frequency to however you want your vibrato to sound and Hank always had that really nice smooth wide vibrato on that whammy bar the other thing is the fact that it is so much bedded in melody you can see at the beginning of this track people are clapping along just to this instrumental and everybody knows this everybody knows Apache it's just one of those tracks that is so melodic everyone can sing it in their head without even hearing somebody play it because it's so strong melodically last night I did a video on Link Ray and it's very much the same thing using that whammy bar for that expression and to get that emotion across another example of not playing a million notes a second but making every note count especially when it's so melodic and it's so melodically strong that you don't need speed people can hum along to your solo and that just in itself is such a unique skill to be able to write something that is so melodic everyone else can sing along. Imagine playing something for three minutes, just over three minutes, that wasn't very good. It just wouldn't get anywhere. It is so difficult to keep people's attention just with melody for that whole three minutes, three minutes 15 that we've got going on here. Another thing that I can't help but think about is imagine if Hank hit a wrong note here. It would absolutely stick out. There's nowhere to hide. It is so clean, the tone. Just a touch of delay on this guitar, but absolutely nowhere to hide. If he did hit a wrong note, he'd then get the delay, the repeat of that wrong note. So it'll be an absolute nightmare. But of course, Hank isn't the kind of guy that's going to start hitting bum notes. He's always so solid. But that is the other thing about playing a song that is so strong in melody that everybody knows. You've got to play it spot on all the time. You can't afford to go a little bit off the beaten track and extemporize and people will think, well, hang on, this isn't the song. So you really have to be strong 
script, with your playing, your phrasing. Like here, the expression is as close as Hank can get it to that original recording, and that's what everybody wants. Sometimes you'll have a guitarist who has a solo that isn't really set in stone, so they can turn up and play, and people aren't going to mind too much if it's slightly off or a different version of it. Whereas, imagine if Hank came along and played Apache without the notes that is the original track. So it's just 100% concentration the whole time. Hank's putting on a little bit of a show here, popping the guitar up with his classic trademark smile as well. But I assure you, he is really concentrating here, making sure that he nails every little aspect of this piece and nailing that expression as well. It's so important. But he's always got his hand on that whammy bar. Let's have a little listen to a bit more. And there we go, there it is. What a cool performance. And just being out on stage by himself, it's really impressive to have that kind of playing to the crowd and smiling and putting on a bit of a show sometimes when guitarists get out there and they haven't got the backing behind them. Of course, Hank uh, playing with the Shadows, Cliff Richard back in the day before my time, but I certainly know them being uh, in the UK. It's kind of part of the heritage when you grow up. You, you know about Cliff Richard and the Shadows as well and Hank Marvin, but the fact that he hasn't got the band behind him, he's just up there on a massive stage by himself. So sometimes that can be a little bit out of the comfort zone of the lead guitarist. There are some guitarists that really struggle when they go out just by themselves and do a little show off piece and they kind of look down at their guitar and don't really like to interact with the crowd. Whereas Hank is just a really likable guy, even not knowing him, but seeing the way that he smiles out to the crowd, he puts on a really nice approachable personality while he's playing. And another classic case of having your own sound and not getting drawn into wanting to sound like somebody else and doing the best with what you've got and how you can play. I think a lot of people spend a lot of time and sometimes waste a lot of time trying to sound like another guitarist rather than just doing what they can do well. People tend to forget that the guitarists that they look up to probably can't play the way that they can play. There'll be certain techniques that people have an affinity for that another guitarist won't. There'll be certain formations of muscle memory that your left hand and your right hand can pick up quickly that other players struggle to get and vice versa. Certainly, when you start playing fast, you'll find little techniques that you can do really quickly without having to spend a lot of time on. And there'll be other techniques that you work on which take a lot of time. It's not as natural. And that's just something to do with the brain and muscle memory. It's everyone is different. Everyone's hands like to do a particular formation. Everyone's had it who plays, whether you're playing finger style or whether you're playing a really fast run with the left hand and the right hand, alternate picking, sweeping, whatever it is. Is, there'll be some techniques that you start to get the hang of more quickly than others. How many times you've been playing finger style and a particular pattern just takes ages to get down because your hand doesn't want to do it. And then another pattern from another song that you might learn, you've got it straight away. And the proof really is in the pudding. When you play like yourself, get your own sound, you will influence other players that are totally different styles, but they will listen to you because you have your own sound. I mean, Hank Marvin has just influenced so many great players. You know, we've got Brian May in there, Clapton, 
Clapton, George Harrison, David Gilmour, Mark Knopfler. The list is pretty much endless as to players who have looked at Hank Marvin and have been influenced by his playing. And Hank isn't one of those guys that's going to absolutely bombard you with notes. It's all about melody. And what you'll find is the top players all respect melody above anything else. They never name loads of guys who can play really fast but don't have a melodic solo somewhere within a song. It's not about how many techniques you can learn, how fast you can play the techniques. It's how you can apply those techniques musically and melodically into a composition. And all the top players know this. They know how difficult it is to write a hit, especially an instrumental hit. Imagine if you could just reel off hit after hit after hit. You would be just a one-person sensation, the likes of which there's never been. There's never, ever been an artist who everything they've released has been a hit. It's impossible. So the top players know exactly how difficult it is to pair the technicalities of playing with the melody of playing in order to then connect with an audience. That's why Hank Marvin has in inspired so many different players from totally different genres because he's got the ability to throw together that unbelievably catchy melody just with a guitar just with a slow lead piece and he's not relying on loads of techniques here to show off he's letting the music do the talking so a great little solo performance here not a bum note in sight and just alternate picking control expression and melody that is the key word of this video is having a solo an instrumental and a composition that is just absolutely filled with melody there's so many hooks going on in this track and it's just thrown together so well it's so well organized the fact that we've got that intro and that outro which is exactly the same like bookends of the piece so that you've got something familiar to end with it's like taking that composition full circle but then we've got little journeys within the composition as well and repeating these phrases repeating these little parts of the journey is what makes it so memorable and so great melodically because the melody is so strong you can repeat it one or two times or even three times and it's always going to stand up because it is so strong but thank you so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below let me know what you guys think and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and i'll see you guys at the next one Rock.